Hey Kylex, so I'm going to show you some tips on shading your wolf. Uh, but you can see that uh, I printed out a picture of somebody else's wolf. And the reason I did that, you saw it in the beginning when I was shuffling through my papers. There it is again. Whenever you can study how another artist figured out the thing that you're drawing, it helps so much they already did the hard stuff so you can look and, and learn from them and then compare it to what you're seeing in the photograph and it'll make things a lot easier so if you want to do that and uh, just google search some wolf drawings make sure to put the drawing part in there and then you can see how people handled fur so right now I'm picking out the pencils that I want to use and I just want an assortment so I'm grabbing, I believe, a 2B, 3B, 5B, and a 9B. And then later I actually grab a 5H, I believe, uh, to show you what it's like. So the B in the pencils stands for softness or blending. I think there's some debate. Who knows? Maybe somebody knows for sure. Um, some people told me it stands for black, but I, I believe it stands for blending. So the lead in the B pencils... Uh, is softer and smearier. It means you can get darker shades and you can blend with it, but you can't get really sharp lines or edges. So the pencil that we use normally is a, a was it 2B? I don't know. It's an HB. I'm sorry. It's been so long since I used a regular pencil. Uh, and so it's right in the center. So if there was a spectrum, right? Your, your standard pencil is right in the middle and then uh, the B's go off and get darker and the H's go off and get lighter and harder. So you see how smeary they are? Like I just rubbed in it and it, it smeared a lot. So here's the 5H, I believe. I, I don't know for sure if it's a 5, maybe it's a 6. Okay, but you can see that it's taking a lot of work and I'm not getting very dark. And actually, if you if you felt my paper, you would feel the bumps, right? Because it's so sharp and so strong that it's actually pressing into the paper. That's no good. But if you were starting your drawing and you're trying to get fine detail, that's perfect. And something like that might also be really nice uh, for some hair detail later. All right, so the biggest change in this picture, the biggest dramatic change in light and dark is what we want to start with. And so the whole background is a lot darker. Uh, if you squint your eyes and look at it, you'll see that it's a, it's a big shift from light and dark. Uh, so what I just pointed at was how I'm holding the pencil. I'm not holding it like normal. I'm sort of overhand uh, and I, I've got it almost flat to the paper and I'm rubbing it on. This protects from making lines. You don't want lines, right? Lines distract. When you're trying to go for realism, you don't want people to see how you made it. So I just took a tissue and blended it. It's not perfectly smooth and that's good. Most people like the look of a little bit of texture. One thing I never want you to do though is blend with your finger. Our fingers have oils and things get kind of greasy when you blend with that. Uh, speaking of grease, right, uh, and also smearing, uh, two ways to protect your picture from your hand is uh, one is putting a paper underneath and the other is balancing on your pinky. You could probably figure out that the reason I turned my picture upside down was to protect from that. Uh, I didn't want to be resting my hand on the wolves while I shaded that big area that is the background. One thing I figured out that's pretty cool is that our snow in this picture is just slightly grayer than the wolves, right? And so that is really lucky because that'll help the white fur and the wolves stand out more. And blending that with a tissue too.
Okay, so we're going to start looking at shading the wolves. You see how I'm, I'm sort of just rubbing in a circular motion? That protects from making lines. If you just color it sideways, the first thing people would see is that you did this in pencil. But we want the first thing people to see uh, to be three wolves in the woods, right? In the snow. Uh, we don't want our pencil to show at the end. So just rubbing in there kind of slowly and building up light to dark will help you have better, more realistic wolves. So now I'm zoomed in. I want you to see how I'm getting a little bit of that furry edge of the wolf by almost back shading into the tree. So I drew a zigzaggy edge for the fur and then I shaded away from the wolf into the tree. And now I'm just filling in the tree so you can't see how I did that. You can see that I outlined the tail and the front leg a little bit. We sometimes have to do that to separate things. We don't have color to help us separate things. So you just want to make sure that it's not super loud, right? Uh, what I mean by loud is it doesn't stand out. So when you do have to outline, kind of blend it in a little bit, soften it. And later, I'll probably soften what I did. So right now, I just learned a lesson. I was trying to do the zigzaggy fur thing, you know, where I shade away from the wolf, but I was using a really soft pencil and it wasn't helping. It, it wasn't doing what I needed it to do. So I switched pencils and that helped a lot. So I'm shading away from the wolf, right? And now I'm going to use a blending stump to blend away. Sometimes you need something small, right? Because our fingers can be kind of big, uh, our finger wrapped in a tissue, that is. If you don't have a blending stump, you can actually uh, wrap a pencil with a tissue or anything that's small. I love how the pencil blends with this. It's really awesome. All right, I'll see you in class. Bye.